Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be learning all about consumer units, so hopefully by the end of the video you'll have a clear and concise understanding of how a consumer unit works. We'll also take a look at the supply to the consumer unit, the various components within a consumer unit and how they operate, such as the main switch, the RCDs and the MCBs. And we'll also be taking a look at a typical earthing arrangement which is in place for our own protection. Now I'm going to be using the European colour codes for this video as I live in the UK um, but it may be different from your local regulations. It's also worth noting voltages will vary depending on where you're from. Here in the UK and Europe it ranges between 220 and 240 volts but you do get other countries that range between 100 volts and 127 volts such as Japan I believe their voltage is 100 volts and then you have countries like the United States that utilize both voltage ranges. Now the first thing I want to do is go back to the very beginning and go from the source of where the power is generated and how that makes its way to your home. So to begin with the power plant generates the electricity which is three phase alternating current. The voltage is then increased significantly in a step up transformer. When voltage is stepped up the current reduces relative to the voltage so that the power remains constant. In other words the higher the voltage the less energy losses you have when transmitting the electricity. The transmission lines then carry that electricity over long distances. Once the electricity is closer to your home, it's then stepped back down in the substation. The electricity will then be distributed through overhead cables or underground cables. That will then feed another transformer that will step the voltage down again before entering your home through a service cable. So on the left hand side of the screen, that's generally what a service cable will look like. And then on the left picture, that's what a meter box looks like from the outside. And then on the right hand picture you can see what a meter box looks like when it's opened up. So the electricity comes in through the service cable at the bottom of the picture there. It then goes through the main cutout fuse which is usually either 60 or 100 amps. And this is in place to ensure only a set amount of current can go into the property. It then goes through the electricity meter which calculates the amount of energy being used and then through the main isolation switch before making its way to the consumer unit. So now you know exactly where those cables have come from before entering the consumer unit. Now there are a variety of different consumer units you can purchase depending on the amount of circuits you have within your house. Now the consumer unit we're going to be looking at today is a 10-way consumer unit which means it can accommodate 10 circuits. So let's go ahead and take a look inside. So let's take the lid off and as you can see here we have a metal constructed consumer unit to comply with regulations. So we have our DIN rail here which our components will attach to. Then we have our neutral bars at the top right here, one, two and three. And we then have our earth terminal block on the left hand side there. So now let's take a look at the components you'll find in a consumer unit. First up we've got the main switch. This is just simply a manually operated switch which is designed to cut the power to the consumer unit should you need it. So once you flip this switch it cuts the power to all the circuits within the property. Next up we have the RCDs. And as this is a dual consumer unit it comprises of two RCDs. And there's the second RCD. Now let's fix that into position. Now the RCD devices are an electrical safety device designed to immediately switch off the supply of electricity when electricity leaking to earth is detected at harmful levels. Now it does this by monitoring the current between the live and neutral. If there's a difference between the live and neutral that exceeds 30 milliamps, the RCD will trip and it will isolate all MCBs that are downstream from the RCD. So if a person was to touch a live wire, that would cause a difference between the live and the neutral and it would trip the RCD. 
which will minimise the risk of an electric shock or any serious injury. This all happens within a fraction of a second and the RCD is in place to save lives. There's also a test button on the RCD which should be checked periodically to make sure that the RCD is still operating correctly. Next up we have the MCB's miniature circuit breakers and these are designed to trip at different values. So on the graphic here we can see a selection of different MCBs that all trip at different current ratings. So each MCB controls a dedicated circuit. For example the 6 amp MCB with the green switch might control a lighting circuit. And perhaps the 32 amp MCB with the brown switch might control a socket circuit. The two main features of an MCB is overload protection and short circuit protection. So let's go ahead and take a look at them now. As discussed the MCB is rated to have a certain amount of current going through it. If this value was to be exceeded on the circuit, for example by plugging in too many appliances, the MCB will trip. This will protect the cable on that circuit, preventing the cable from overheating and potentially stopping a fire. Now the other safety feature it includes is short circuit protection. So what this means is if the live was to bypass the load and touch the neutral, there is now next to no resistance within the circuit. You end up with an instantaneous and large current flowing through the wires. This increase in current will create a large magnetic field within the MCB, which will trip the MCB to protect itself and the cable. So here's what a dual consumer unit looks like after we've populated it with MCBs and we're just locking those in place. And here is the copper boss bar which has a comb like shape and it just slips into the plastic sheath. And you can cut these metal boss bars down to the required amount depending on how many MCBs you're attaching to the RCD. Once you slide the metal boss bar in place you can then lock them down with the screws provided at the bottom of the MCBs. And it's the same method for the second copper boss bar which attaches the second RCD to the other bank of five MCBs. So we now have two RCDs that are controlling separate banks of MCBs. Okay, so let's now go ahead and take a look at how the consumer unit is wired up. So the live and neutral meter tails will come into the consumer unit and make their way to the top of the main switch. The live will then exit the bottom of the main switch and make its way to the first RCD. The first RCD will then connect in turn to the second RCD and the power will flow through the RCD simultaneously. I will just demonstrate the right side first and then the left. The power flows through the RCD and into the bus bar at the bottom which links all five MCBs to the RCD. So if there was a fault on a circuit with any one of them MCBs where the earth leakage exceeded 30 milliamps that RCD will trip and the power will be cut to all five circuits or sometimes it can be an accumulation of earth leakage on different circuits for example if the first three circuits were leaking 10 milliamps each that would accumulate to 30 milliamps in total and still trip the RCD so as you can see here it's the same deal for the second RCD the power flows in through the RCD to the buzz bar at the bottom which provides the power and links the rest of the MCBs to the RCD. And again that RCD will trip should there be an earth leakage of more than 30 milliamps. For example if someone was to touch a live wire in one of them five circuits that would cause an imbalance between the live and neutral in the RCD and shut down all five circuits very quickly hopefully preventing you from getting an electric shock. So I've colour coded the graphic here so you can see where all the neutrals of both RCDs and MCBs go to. So let's take a look at the neutral now. So the neutral comes out of the bottom of the main switch and into the main terminal bar of the neutral at the top right. It then goes through the top of the first RCD, out through the bottom and then makes its way to the second terminal bar. We then have another neutral cable that makes its way from the main terminal bar to the top of the second RCD out through the bottom and to the third neutral terminal bar. And this is essentially how most consumer units come pre-wired when you buy them. 
and as you can see here we'll have 10 different circuits going from the consumer unit to the rest of the property. So here are the 10 cables coming into the consumer unit and these cables will come in various sizes depending on the circuit it's delivering power to. If it's a low powered circuit such as the lighting circuit it will only require a smaller diameter cable such as the 1.5mm cable on a 6 amp breaker. However if it's a higher powered circuit such as the feed to the cooker you will require a much larger 10mm cable on say a 50 amp MCB to protect the circuit. If you don't use the correctly sized cable for the circuit, for example the cable being too small for the current running through it, it will overheat and potentially cause a fire. So it's really important to make sure you have the appropriately sized cable for any given circuit. Let's go ahead now and bring the consumer unit down a little to make room for a circuit. It's important to note that it's AC alternating current that's being used here where the electricity moves back and forth and doesn't flow in one direction. However, for the purposes of demonstrating what is happening and an easier understanding, I'm going to show the current flowing in one direction for now. And let's just focus on one circuit so we can clearly see what's happening here. If I were to show you on this graphic all 10 cables getting wired into this consumer unit, it might start to get a little confusing, so let's just stick with one circuit for now. So if you look at the bottom right hand side of the screen, the power comes in on the live through the main cutout fuse, through the electricity meter and then through the main isolation switch. It makes its way all the way down to your main switch inside your consumer unit. It then comes out the bottom of the main switch and makes its way round to the first RCD. It then goes through the RCD and provides power to the copper buzz bar at the bottom which links the RCD to the MCBs. Now you get two types of socket circuits, a radial circuit where the cable links the sockets from point to point but does not return back to the consumer unit on the last socket. And then we have what is called a ring circuit here in the UK where the cables return from the last socket back to the consumer unit. So let's go ahead now and continue the path of our radial socket circuit. So here we have here our 2.5mm twin and earth cable and the live makes its way over to the 16 amp MCB. And let's go ahead and connect the neutral up. The power then flows through the MCB and up towards the socket. It then flows through our socket plug that's connected to our appliance, in this instance it's a hairdryer. It then goes through the load and back towards the socket. It travels through our neutral cable and back towards the first neutral bar. From there it makes its way to the bottom of the RCD. Then goes through the top of the RCD and towards the main neutral bar. Then from the main neutral bar to the main switch at the bottom there. Through the top of the main switch inside the consumer unit and makes its way over to the main isolation switch of the property. Then through the electricity meter and finally through the main cutout fuse. Now as I mentioned earlier on it's AC current we're dealing with so the electricity will behave more like this. Where the electricity or electrons vibrate and move back and forth in one place. I just showed the electricity flowing through the circuit to help give a better understanding. Okay, so let's go ahead now and take a look at the earthing arrangement inside a property. Now the purpose of the earth wire is to protect people from electric shock by providing a low resistance path back to ground. So in the event of a fault, the large current will pass through the earth wire instead of passing through the person and this will trip the RCD. So let's take a look at our socket circuit again now and how the earth wire makes its way back to ground. So the earth wire comes into the property and from the main cutout fuse goes to a copper bar called the main earth terminal. From there it makes its way from the main earth terminal to the earth terminal of the consumer unit. The twin and earth cable coming from the socket circuit includes an earth wire to attach to the earth terminal bar in the consumer unit. The earth wire then makes its way over to the appliance you have plugged in. 
It is important to note that not all appliances have an earth wire. This might be because it has a plastic casing or the live wire has been designed in a way that it can't touch the casing should it come loose. Now in the event of a fault, if the earth wire isn't installed correctly or doesn't have a sufficient ground and the live wire were to come in contact with a metal casing and then you go and touch this metal casing, you will end up getting electrocuted. So let's go ahead and take a look at the path the current should take should there be a fault on the appliance. The current flows from the appliance back to the socket. Then from the socket to the earth terminal bar inside the consumer unit which makes its way back to the main earth terminal bar and back to the main cutout fuse and out of the property. And you will have many earth wires going out to all the different circuits within your home. You also have other earthing wires which will connect from the main earthing terminal such as metal pipes from the plumbing, gas pipes and any other extraneous metal surfaces. That way if there's any kind of electrical fault the current will flow through the earth wire to ground, tripping the RCD almost immediately preventing anyone from getting an electric shock. Now there are a variety of different ways the main earth terminal can be connected to ground and I'll go over them now. The first option is called a TNCS supply, which means the earth wire is connected to the neutral wire within the service cable. This combined cable is called a protective earthed neutral. Another option is called a TNS system, and this involves connecting the earth cable to the metal protective sheath around the service cable and using that as the earth conductor, and this will carry the fault back to ground. And finally you have a TT system which is when the electricity supply doesn't provide an earth path. So instead a copper electrode is installed into the ground and this provides a direct earth path. Okay so let's move this back up now. And I just want to quickly mention a few other hardware components that you can purchase. One of these is an MCB blank. Let's say your home only has 8 circuits but you have a 10 way consumer unit. You can just use these blanks to fill out the consumer unit. You can also buy what is known as an RCBO, which is essentially an RCD and MCB combined. An RCBO board is definitely the best way to go, however the downside to them is they're a lot more expensive. You can also get surge protection devices, which protects against surges into the system from outside the property. These surges are usually caused by lightning strikes and this can damage wiring and devices within the property and the device is designed to trip if any inward surge is detected. And then you have what is known as an arc fault detection device. These are designed to prevent electrical arcs from occurring between two conductive materials. These arcs create very high temperatures and can be the cause of fires. So as you can see guys there's a lot of different hardware and components involved. And there are a lot of factors to consider when working on a consumer unit. Electricity is extremely dangerous and can be fatal. So you should be qualified and competent to carry out any electrical work. Alright guys, that's about it for this one. Thanks very much for watching. Hopefully the video has been helpful to someone. And I'll see you guys in the next one.